Greetings, BookTube. So today I am going to do a video review of The Shake by Maggie Davis. This book was my pick for uh, Garb August 2023, Electric Boogaloo. Uh, so it's my second book for Garb August 2023. Um, playlist of all the trashy books I reviewed on my channel. I don't know how to list a how to list a playlist in the description yet. I don't know. Um, so what can I say about this book? Did I enjoy reading it? Not really. Um, it's probably my least favorite trashy book out of all four that I have uh, reviewed on this channel. Um, so I wouldn't recommend it. It's it's very boring. Um, there were some interesting points, but uh, yeah, so it, um, I would recommend it if, if specific aspects of this book interest you. And we will get into that in a moment. So like the rest of the Garb August books, I will not give this book a rating. Um, so what's the book about? So there is this... Um, this book was published in 1977. And it's a story about an, a fictional er emirate called Rashmani. And judging from the geography described in the book, it seems to be a stand-in for Qatar. Uh, judging from how they describe the geography and where countries are adjacent to, etc., etc. It's a stand-in for Qatar. And they have recently, after much dr drilling, discovered oil, oil wealth. And um, the country is overflowing with wealth after their recent discovery of oil. And the, within the society, within the population, local and immigrant population in, in Rashmani, and the, within, the, within the government, there are radical elements that want a, want a fairer share of the wealth want a more fair share distribution of the oil wealth. And they are deeply, uh, they deeply hate the imperialist foreign oil companies that, to be frank, the government actually needs because they don't have the technical expertise of oil drilling. So they need the foreign companies to help them drill. Uh, but the radical elements really, really want a redistribution of the wealth. Now, uh, the the sheikh the the uh, the uh, sheikh, as mentioned in the title, is the um, Abdu is Abdullah Al Asmari, Abdullah Al Asmari, who is the grandson of the Emir, the current ruler of that uh, emirate, of the emirate, and he uh, is a little bit of a. I, I'm not. I don't. I don't quite like him. He uh, he's a little bit of a playboy and a little bit of a, um, but he is all but he is very much a ruthless politician, a go-getter, as will be proven later in the book. But so Abdullah Al Asmari is sent by the by his grandfather, the Emir, to the United States to buy banks to store some of the wealth and to. The fan just went back on. The electricity came back. <laughs> and to um, attend a board meeting of oil business interests, like a large company, like a large cooperative of uh, oil, oil companies and representatives of, of government, so, sort of like OPEC, but this one is called Garok, where they get together and, um, yeah, discuss the extraction of oil and price controls, etc., etc. Um, he is to attend this meeting and demand a better share for the government so that they can do better infrastructure projects, provide health care for the people. So he is there to ask the, the uh, business and government interests of all these other um, oil producing governments and uh, private companies for a greater share for them. That's what he sent there for. 
but as well as buying a few banks to uh, store the wealth that they've recently acquired. He goes to California to buy some banks and he goes to New York City to attend this board meeting. Now, in the midst of, in the midst of uh, all this business talk, all this uh, um, business and economic talk about oil production, oil extraction re and refining and uh, price controls, the stock market, etc., etc., all that stuff, but I, all that before I get to the next thing, all that stuff just flies way past my, flies past my head. I could understand the individual words, but I couldn't put everything together to make a coherent un understanding of what oil economics really are all about. It, it just, I'm just not passionate about it. I just couldn't really understand it. It, it just bored me to friggin' tears. But in the midst of him doing his business in the United States, uh, representing his country, Abdullah is, uh, has some, his cousin Hassan, an Egyptian and who is an actor, uh, an A-list actor, by the way, shows him a good time in Hollywood. And the book, throughout the book, it's sprinkled with his, uh, Abdullah's, uh, conquests, shall we say. And his, um... And his decadence and his his hedon uh, his hedonistic vacation slash work business trip, <laughs> and he just he liberally gives out gifts to uh, to all his uh, associates, and the book also talks about him consuming a lot of alcohol, a lot of the a lot of this the Arab delegation going to the United States consumes a lot of alcohol and. And his two Bedouin bodyguards, uh, tribesmen bodyguards, are Wahhabists slash Salafists, uh, Salafist Muslims. They're very devout, and they and it's a little funny watching them, uh, like uh, grit their teeth in uh, anger as their boss, as their leader, just uh, gets shit faced drunk, and they're like, hey, well, it's <laughs> it's super awkward. That that's a funny moment. I must say. And the titillating stuff in here about his various conquests of women, yeah, that kept me glued to the page because I think most of us on BookTube enjoy reading a little bit of smut now and then. But all the business stuff was just boring and it flew right past me. That wasn't important. But then, but then, towards the end of the book, uh, the radical elements within the country suddenly uh, cause anarchy in the streets of the emirate. So back home in uh, Rashmani, which is a stand-in for Qatar, there is a breakdown of law and order. There's rebels, uh, there's people with guns fighting in the streets, demanding a fairer share of the distribution of wealth. And it is up to Sheikh Abdullah to fly back quickly and restore order. And so, and this book also talks about culture shock, how he's shocked about how, how um, hedonistic the lifestyles of the Americans are. It, it, it's an absolute culture shock because he, his, um, his life up until then was just a small group of family. Uh, his circle wasn't actually very large. He didn't know a lot of people. He was, shall we say, sheltered in a very devout Muslim household. And then once he sees all this craziness in the, in the United States, he actually longs to go back to the traditional, his traditional way of life back home even though along the way he actually enjoys his conquests. But then he kind of gets tired of it. Um, Abdullah is not really a very likable person. Um, he is a go-getter, like I said earlier, a ruthless politician. And uh, he is, uh, he's a bit of a playboy. And, uh, but he does love his uh, family. He has a son. And he has a sister who he really didn't want to, he hated that he, 
that his sister was married off to some Saudi prince. Sad. And he even uh, argued with his grandfather about it. Um, there's also another subplot of him uh, worried that he will uh, uh, have a mental breakdown because his father um, ended his life as a... Um, uh, a mentally broken person, uh, insane. Um, well, I don't know what uh, I don't know what uh, what you call it in this psychological world. <laughs> anyway, um, because his his father died crazy, and uh, he's worried that he will go crazy as well. And they ha he had some near he had some near misses with uh, madness. So that's an interesting side plot. So this book has like a laundry list of stuff. So there's oil economics, there's culture shock, there is um, sex, and there is uh, wish fulfillment, uh, wealth wish fulfillment. Like if you won the lottery, what would you do with it? This book kind of teases that kind of wish fulfillment uh, in people's heads. Teases. What would you do with a billion dollars? Huh? Have all the easy women you want, um, have all the booze you want, and, uh, and live in a palace of gold. So, yeah, it has wish fulfillment, culture shock, oil economics, and sex. If you're interested in any of those things, by all means, pick up The Shake by Maggie Davis. For me, other than the sex, other than the smut, it was very boring, this book. There was not much I picked out of it. But, uh, yeah, um, and at many times I really wanted to DNF this book because it was so... because the oil economics, the oil business stuff was just painfully dull I don't care about this I don't care about prices going up and down in the stock market I don't care how you structure your oil company and how you assign tasks to people I'm not running an oil company I'm not running a government it's it's all boring and at the end at the end, they were like, like I said earlier, there were thrills. Abdullah flies back from the United States quickly to restore order. So it was as if, as if the book was thinking, as if the author was thinking, oh, I need to put in some thrills. Quick, quick, quick. Um, make the prince, make the sheikh the hero of the day, where he swoops back in and takes down the terrorists, takes down the rebels, and restores order, and claims his place as emir. So, uh, I rambled on, some of my sentences were a bit disconnected, but uh, I hope you enjoy this review, and uh, so, uh, yeah, my Garbogus experience is uh, over. I'm not sure if I'm going to participate in Garbogus next year, unless, unless, unless somebody approaches me and asks me to be a host, because I want that smutty nickname. <laughs> okay, hashtag Garbogist. Um, see you later.